for us to determine adjusted taxable income, we need to combine together tax, uh, uh, business incomes and business expenses. We put together business incomes and business expenses so that we are able to come up with taxable business, adjusted taxable business income. We have business incomes and business expenses being uh, put together. So we have incomes and expenses, business incomes and business expenses. Now, what we're going to look at in terms of business income and business expenses is um, the types of incomes and the types of expenses. So I want to start with business um, incomes. Now, talking about business incomes, we have two types of business incomes, one being taxable business income And these taxable business incomes are incomes chargeable to tax. From the video which I will share with you, you realize that they are incomes chargeable to tax. That is what the definition is. And then we have non-taxable business incomes. We have taxable business incomes and non-taxable business incomes. These are incomes which are not chargeable to tax. So we are going to look at the two of them. I want to start with the first category, which is the, the taxable business incomes, which are chargeable to tax, taxable business incomes. These taxable business incomes have a number of examples or According to Income Tax Act, there are a number of examples, as you can see, listed here. The first one being gain arising from ordinary business. Ordinary business, which involves buying and selling of goods and services, that can be done partly in Kenya and partly outside Kenya. So that gain um, arising from gain arising from ordinary business, which is either done in Kenya or done partly in Kenya and partly outside Kenya. Such gains are taxable in Kenya. The next one is amount of insurance claim. Amount of insurance claim. Insurance claim here is also insurance compensation. Insurance compensation for loss of profit or damage of trading stock. Loss of profit or damage of trading stock. So a compensation that you receive for loss of profit or damage of trading stock is taxable. It is taxable because it is assumed that such compensation is received in exchange for such stock. It's like if you could have sold such stock, you could have got that cash back. If you could have made that profit, it could have been taxable. So that is why that such particular claim in exchange of profit or in exchange of stock is taxable in Kenya. Next is amount of trade bad debt recovered. Amount of trade bad debts recovered, which were previously written uh, allowed, previously allowed when written off. Trade bad debts recovered, which were previously allowed when written off. And I want to give a brief explanation on trade bad debts as well as provision for bad debts. This is what's happening with trade bad debts. Bad debts when written off, in accounting, bad debts written off are expenses. The same way in taxation, they are expenses. Bad debts written off are expenses. But in, a, in taxation now, they are further divided into two. The two categories are non-trade bad debts and we have uh, related parties bad debts.
This is one category. And this other end, we have trade bar dates. Now, what's happening here is that when we talk about trade bar dates, purely trade bar dates, which are not related parties, these bar dates are expenses, but which are allowable. Allowable expenses. When you talk about allowable expenses, meaning expenses which are supposed to be deducted from income. Expenses which can be deducted from income. Then non-trade bad debts and bad debts which are to related parties are non-allowable or disallowable expenses. They are not allowable. Disallowable expenses, meaning non-allowable expenses. So when trade bodies are written off and then they are recovered, they become incomes. Trade bodies recovered after they were written off become incomes. They become incomes. That is, sorry, before I, I say that, I need to say these bodies have been recovered. Bodies written off, but then recovered. If bodies are recovered, they are incomes. If bodies are recovered, they are incomes. So these are incomes. Bad debts recovered are incomes. Bad debts recovered are incomes. However, if bad debts are recovered, which were not allowed by the time they were written off, they become non-taxable income. By the time they were written off, they were not allowed. So if they are recovered, they are not taxable. But if bad debts were written off, by the time they were written off, they were allowed, when they are recovered, they become taxable. So that is the classification. Now, what I'm talking about here is trade bad debts recovered, which when written off were allowed, this category. That is what I'm talking about. It falls in the category of taxable incomes, as you can see here. So I said under taxable income, trade bad debts recovered, which were previously allowed when written off, they are taxable incomes. That is whatever I've explained here. Otherwise, if trade burdens were not allowed by the time they were written off, then by the time they are recovered, they are not taxable. And therefore they fall under category of non-taxable business incomes under this category. And that is this item here. Recovery of bad debts, which when written off were not allowed. Example is non-trade bad debts. You can see that. That is under non-taxable incomes. Let me take you back to the taxable incomes because that is where I was. And I would like to explain first before I, I, I continue, allow me to explain something closely related to bad debts is known as provision for bad debts. provision for bad debts. This item known as provision for bad debts is closely related to debts because they, 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 they have more or less the same principle. Provision for bad debts in accounting are divided into two. Whereby in accounting, we either have increase in provision or decrease in provision. We either have increase in provision or decrease in provision for bad debts. Now, in case of increase in provision for bad debts, this is always expense in accounting. And increase in provision is always income in accounting. You remember where after, when you are preparing statement of profit or loss and you you have increase in provision, it is an expense and decrease in provision is an income. Now, allow me to explain what I want to talk about here further that when we are talking about uh, provision for bad debts in taxation, then we consider this provision again, dividing, dividing it into two. We have increase in provision, which is an expense 
as increase in general provision for budget and increase in specific provision for budget. Also the same is happening on the side of decrease, whereby the decrease can be decreased in general provision or decrease in specific provision for budget. Therefore, Therefore, we have two categories where we have increase in general provision or increase in specific provision. And then we have decrease in general provision and decrease in specific provision. Increase is an expense and decrease is an income. But then Income Tax Act, again, we have the following provision that if we have increase in general provision, this is this allowable expense. It's an expense which is not allowable. And increase in specific provision is allowable expense. When we come to decrease, decrease in, in general provision is non-taxable income. Income not taxable. Non-taxable income, while um, increase in specific, uh, decrease in specific provision is income which is allowable, which is taxable, not allowable, but taxable. Income which is taxable. So that is how to treat provision for bad debt in taxation. Now, just to take you back where we were, under taxable incomes, under taxable incomes, we have another here, another, um, another taxable income, which I've not included there, called decrease in provision, decrease in specific provision, decrease in specific provision for bad debt is also allowable. Um, I mean, is also taxable income, is also taxable income. Another taxable income is called balancing charge, uh, trading receipt. These two are incomes which originate from investment allowances. So I will give you explanation to them well when we come to investment allowances. For now, just know that they are allowable, they are taxable income. Just know that they are taxable income, but I will explain them better when we talk about investment allowances. So check. Uh, or be sure in that lecture of investment allowances so that you can be able to understand them there. The next one is amount of foreign gain realized. Foreign gain uh, uh, arises out of exchanging one currency with another one. For example, you exchange Kenya shillings with the US dollars. If you exchange them at a profit, that is what is called the foreign exchange gain. To mean realize, or what we mean by realize, is to mean that we have done this actual transaction of exchanging one currency against another one. Otherwise, at some times, a currency may gain value against another one, but before the, the, the exchange takes place, it is called unrealized gain. The unrealized gain is not taxable. It's not taxable. Next is post cessation income. Income received after cessation of business, which could have been taxable if received before cessation of business. Such incomes are still taxable even if received after cessation of business. That is about taxable incomes. Let me take you through non-taxable incomes briefly. The first one is investment income from overseas or overseas investment income. And if you can remember that uh, in Kenya or according to Income Tax Act, Investment income in Kenya include interest income and dividend income. 
those are the investment incomes in Kenya. So such investment incomes, if received from an overseas investment, they will not be uh, taxable in Kenya. Next is decrease in general provision for bad debts. I have illustrated this in my explanation here. If you can remember here, this is general provision for, I mean, this is decrease in provision for bad debt, which is income. If it is a decrease in general provision, it is not taxable. So that is what I'm illustrating in this case. Decrease in general provision for bad debts. You can see that here, or reduction in general provision for bad debts. Additional capital introduced by the owner of the business is also not taxable. Recovery for bad debts of bad debts I had explained before. And lastly, we have any other income exempted from taxation under the first schedule of Income Tax Act will be uh, exempted from taxation according to Income Tax Act. 